All right, now that you've done number one, on to number two. Remember, we're doing programs where uh, we'll make the function do most of the work and do the input in the main part. So number two lets us use over two integer values. Again, it looks very much like the previous, but instead of uh, printing out a range, we're going to do a loop to do the multiplication, since we know that multiplication is just multiple additions. So uh, let's jump on that. Here I've got my solution to program one. I'm going to cheat a bit. And I'm going to call this program 2. Obviously, this is going to change a bit. Multiply. Um, I'm going to call it multiply a times b. So really what we want to happen here is we want to multiply a times b using a loop and addition. And if we look at the specs here, it says uh, if the input was 4 or 6, we get the answer by starting with the answer of 0, sum of 0, and adding the larger value. Well, the second value. You can do it either way. It doesn't really matter. Um, we would do it 4 times. So we want to do, so add b to a sum, which starts at 0, a times. All right. So let's just... Uh, a scaffolding type answer of return zero here and then let's start the main program so enter the smaller value is that what it asks for enter value greater than or equal to the other value yeah so all of that stays the same all of this is our main input stuff we're gonna leave that the same so now we just need to call multiply with a and b and we're gonna call these a and b instead of low and high just because I want to change that and we'd have to change that, and we'd have to change a bit of refactoring here. So let's see, and then we call multiply AB. Uh, before I do anything else, I'm going to check that this all runs fine. So let's try Python 3, and this is program 2.py. And a small value, 3, 7, and it has a problem there. While high is less than low, oh, uh, well, yeah. I to refactor out that a, b, and a. Let's try that again. Let's do three, and let's do one, and it complains, and we'll do ten, and it's happy. Okay. Now notice we're going to call multiply a, b, but the job of this multiply is to actually return something. So it should return the value of a times b. Okay. We've had a lot of discussions about the difference between return, when should you print. Um, this is a function, and its job is to take the input of a and b and answer with the multiplication of it. So what we should actually do is we should do something with that multiply. There's a few things we could do, but it really makes sense to store the value of the multiplication, and then we're going to print it out. So what does it show here in the example? It says the product of this and that is that. So we're going to print, but it's not always going to be 4. It's going to actually be the product of... Oops, the product of, uh, I believe it's the comma inserts a space. So product of A and B is Z. Okay, it looks like, so I'm going to print this string. The comma in the print means then print the A, then print the and, notice I put a space in here before, and it's probably not necessary, but we'll see. I'm gonna take it out, see if it makes it look ugly, and uh, let's try it out. So we know that it's always gonna print zero, but let's check it out, four times six, and it's gonna say the product of four and six is zero. So again, these commas put the spaces in conveniently for us. It doesn't really matter where the spaces are inside here, but the fact, between each printing value with a comma, it inserts spaces in the output. So it looks good. Our output's good, but we're not actually doing anything. So what do we need to do? We need to create a sum value, which is zero. And then we're going to keep doing this. Sum will be sum plus the uh, b. But we want to do that a times. So in, in essence, what we want to do is we want to just keep doing this and this and this. How many times? Well, a times. But if we want to do something repeatedly, then we're going to use a loop. We could use a while loop. We could use a for loop. Um, generally, we want to think about 
But if we know exactly how many times something's going to happen, a for loop makes sense. How many times are we going to do it? Well, a times. So we can say for i in range a, what this will do is it'll make i go 0, then 1, then 2, then 3, all the way up to a, but not including a, which happens to be a different values for i. Notice we're not actually using i in here. We're just faking, um, well not faking, we're just using i to multiple um, do the addition. So once that's happened, at the end of this, um, multiple a times of sum of sum plus b, we have the value in sum. So we're going to return sum here. Notice we don't have the return inside this loop. Why? Well, if it's inside this loop, what we do is we go into the loop. i is going to get 0, because that'll be the first value in the range. We'll do that sum, and then we're going to immediately return the value. But we don't want to return it yet. We need to keep looping and returning at the end of the loop. Let's try it out. Let's try 1 and 10. That's pretty obvious. 2 and 10. Looks like it's working to me. 4 and 6. Alright. Looks good for now.